Let's start with the moon. Doesn't the moon seem friendly? And the moon. Calm and constant and predictable. Beautiful. Romantic even. And then NASA has to ruin it for everyone. Daytime temperatures near the lunar equator reach a boiling 250 degrees Fahrenheit, while nighttime temperatures get to a chilly minus 208 degrees Fahrenheit. The moon's poles are even colder. And we think that the moon is our constant companion, our friendly neighbor. It's not. It's bloody miles away. The moon is not your friend, okay? Next is Jupiter. As a gas giant, Jupiter, it doesn't even have a true surface. You're not even making an effort, Jupiter. You could at least try to be normal and have a fucking rocky surface. NASA says the planet is mostly swirling gases and liquids. While a spacecraft would have nowhere to land on Jupiter, it wouldn't be able to fly through unscathed either. The extreme pressures and temperatures deep inside the planet would crush, melt, and vaporize spacecraft trying to fly through. Jesus Christ. You have a giant red spot that the Earth could fit into Jupiter. And that's a storm that's been raging for over 150 years. What's wrong with you, Jupiter? Now, let's talk about the scale of the solar system. The solar system that we were presented with in the good old days seemed very ordered and logical and reasonable. Here it is. But that's not true. This is what it's really like. Look at that. What are we supposed to do with that? Apparently, our entire solar system can fit in between the Earth and the Moon. The rest is just terrifying vastness of space. Now the worst is this VY Canis Majoris. Have you seen this thing? Talk about making a mockery of us. This thing is unbelievable. So that's the Earth with the sun. Already the sun looks like ridiculously big. What's happening now? What's that white one? That's insane. Wriggle. And then this is the worst. This is outrageous. This is bloody ridiculous. VY Canis Majoris. Bullshit. It gets worse with rogue planets. A rogue planet is an interstellar object of planetary mass which is not gravitationally bound to any star or brown dwarf. So basically, it's careening through space randomly, looking for trouble. Current estimates state that at least 100 billion stars exist in the Milky Way galaxy. There could be at least 2 trillion rogue planets randomly floating throughout our tiny corner of the universe. 2 trillion. Disgraceful. Although the chances of a rogue planet entering our solar system and hitting Earth are low, if we were unfortunate enough, the planet would collide with Earth, ending life as we know it. You've heard of rogue planets floating through the universe, untethered to any solar system? Now meet rogue stars, which drift through space with no galaxy to call home. A new study has come to the startling conclusion that as many as half of all stars in the universe may be rogue, having been ejected from their birthplaces by galaxy collisions or mergers. And then there are hypervelocity stars. So they're like rogue planets, but worse because they're bigger. HE04375439 is one of the fastest hypervelocity stars ever detected. It is blazing across space at a speed of 1.6 million miles an hour, three times faster than our sun's orbital velocity in the Milky Way. Black holes are equal parts intriguing and terrifying. They can consume entire galaxies and can even bend space-time around them. 
So what could possibly make them more dreadful? Well, the fact that there's a giant rogue black hole moving through space at roughly 3 million miles per hour, of course. B31745 plus 25 was discovered by the Hubble telescope in 2017 and is about 1 billion times heavier than our sun. It's believed that this black hole broke away after its galaxy collided with another galaxy and now freely travels through space. In case you weren't anxious or paranoid enough already, you should also consider the possibility of a catastrophic solar flare. The most powerful geomagnetic storm in modern history, known as the Carrington event, occurred in 1859, before the modern age of technology. If a Carrington magnitude storm were to occur now, it would cause an internet apocalypse an outage that could last months. The chance of such a huge solar storm was rated at between 1.6 and 12% per decade. Now, vastness and distance. Distances are so vast in space that we would have to spend a lot of time traveling. Even to go to Mars, it could take up to seven months Staying in zero gravity for long periods of time like that can affect a person's physical and mental health. Some astronauts that spent weeks in space, that's weeks, not months, experienced muscular atrophy. That's because most of their muscles don't experience any stress from gravity, causing them to become inactive and die out from the lack of motor function. To make matters worse, Astronauts can develop mental health conditions like depression and anxiety due to being away from physical human interaction for so long and thus require psychological therapy after their space missions. Yeah, tell me about it. And then there's space radiation. Beyond low Earth orbit, space radiation may place astronauts at significant risk for radiation sickness and increased lifetime risk of cancer, central nervous system effects, and degenerative diseases. Research studies of exposure in various doses and strengths of radiation provide strong evidence that cancer and degenerative diseases are to be expected from exposures to galactic cosmic rays or solar particle events. Who needs horror movies when we can just think about space? Maybe we should tell kids about this before they're all, I want to be an astronaut when I grow up. Finally, we have this. When one zooms out to envision the cosmos as a whole, the cosmic web formed by these clusters and filaments looks strikingly similar to the connectome, a term that refers to the complete wiring diagram of the brain which is formed by neurons and their synaptic connections. So, what? You're saying that the universe is a brain and that my brain is a universe. Get the fuck out of here. That's a fucking insult. Take away my fucking Pluto. It's not a fucking... It's not a fucking brain. That's fucking bullshit. You already took away my fucking Pluto saying it wasn't a planet.